when I um, started Living Homes, the idea was, first of all, to target a group of people who, like me, really value design, help, and sustainability. Mm. So um, we're variously called the cultural creatives. We're driving Priuses or Teslas. We're shopping at Whole Foods. We're buying Patagonia, reading Dwell or Wired. We're doing yoga. Uh, we're, we're using Apple products. So as I just illustrated, there are lots of companies whose products offer the kind of form and functionality and that are built in a healthy and sustainable way, mm. things we value. But the production home builders in the United States, they don't historically build for that consumer. So I said, I'm going to start a company, get great architects, integrate an extremely comprehensive environmental program, and then use prefabrication to make what we do more efficiently. That's what we're doing. The concept of living homes is Z6. Explain what that is. Well, Z6 is not so much the concept. It's just um, we use the LEAD program, Leadership in Environmental and Energy Design, as a external verification of what we're doing. It's administered by a nonprofit. But internally, we use something we call Z6. We developed it. We're trying to make our homes as much as possible, zero energy, zero water, zero waste, zero carbon, zero emissions, which is indoor air quality, and zero ignorance. Because you can do lots of things to reduce your ecological footprint, but if the people who live in the homes mm. aren't responsible right. about the resources they use, then you're going to use a lot of resources. So we've never built a home with zero across everything, right. but we aspire as much as possible okay. to try to reduce our impact to zero and, frankly, go to the next step, which is to make things restorative. And then the prefab idea. Uh, why prefabrication? So um, building on site in the U.S. is um, can be a very long um, stressful, expensive yeah. process. Uh, there are some great general contractors who exist, and there are many who are not so great. And so <laughs> um, there are horror stories many people have about yes. building. What's nice about prefab, which is building off-site, pre, before, building off-site, is that, first of all, you can build in parallel. So while you're doing the site work, you're building, in our case, modules, like big Lego pieces, off-site. Mm -hmm. So we're able to build in half to a third of the time because of that. We're building in parallel. We don't have to wait for the site work. Right. Two, we're building in areas that have much lower cost labor, so we're able to take advantage of some cost savings that way. Also, instead of using a bunch of subcontractors, they're people who work for the factory. So again, some cost savings. Mm -hmm. And then much less waste. Um, when you do a home on-site, um, maybe 30, 40 percent of your materials end up in landfill. Incredibly wasteful. Mm. Off-site, we do precise shop drawings to more carefully figure out what materials we need to order. And because it's in a controlled environment, a factory, we're able to store and reuse the materials, so much less waste. So those are some of the advantages of building off-site. Now let's talk about cost, because oftentimes, before you mention all these products, Apple and going to Whole Foods and things like that, Oftentimes, when you want to be green, when you want to be eco-conscious, when you want to be doing the right thing, um, organic, it's expensive for the average person. So is that the case with these homes as well? Well, it can be, although, you know, funny enough, look at what um, Walmart has done with organic foods. Yep. They've made that much more affordable. Look at what's happening with the new generation of hybrids and, and even electric cars with Tesla's uh, uh, Model 3 coming out and, and Bolt from uh, uh, GM, um, building materials more and more are available that are sustainable, that are no more expensive than non-sustainable okay. materials. LED lights, for example, have come down dramatically in costs. Um, we have a line of homes that we're able to complete in Los Angeles at a price level that, frankly, you just, you couldn't build anything. Forget architectural, forget um, lead platinum level. So um, uh, it's happening. We're, we, we, with greater volumes, we're starting to see um, sustainable products that are no more expensive than non-sustainable products. What kind of reaction have you gotten from the industry, um, from developers and just the housing and building industry to what you're trying to do? Because you're trying to disrupt a bit. There is no Google, there's no Apple, there's no one, there's no Microsoft who has unbelievable micro, uh, market share, and we don't have that aspiration. Yeah. We are, fr we freely admit that most people in the country who want a home don't want the kinds of homes we build. 
However, we believe that there are a huge number of people who want the kind of home we build that are underserved. And oh, by the way, you can be a rounding error on a $270 billion biz, uh, uh, market yeah. and be a very large company. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're okay with that. What's next for living homes? Um, we've got some new models we'll be introducing this year, which we're really excited about. Um, we um, doubled in contracts last year, so we have a bunch of homes. Uh, we have more homes in production now than we ever have. We will complete twice as many homes this year than our best year ever. Wow. Um, and, you know, one bummer about this company has been the fact, uh, was the fact that I started it um, a year and change before the worst real estate downturn since the Great Depression it started 10 years ago right. with the installation of my home. And, you know, a year and change later, hurricane level um, headwinds. Uh, but we got through it. And as I said, we've had an incredible last year, two years. And so we'll be doing more projects. We'll be doing more development. So, um, yeah, that's what's ahead.